Chair Sutton, Vice Chair Mejia, Chair Secretary Treasurer Ar Norby, Director Angeles. Present. Director Kemp. Here. Director Rawlings. Here. Director Thrash Untuk. Directors Sutton and Thrash Untuk have been excused. We have a quorum. Great, thank you. Uh, I would like to welcome our newest director, Carl Kemp, to the Long Beach Transit Board of Directors. Welcome, Carl. Usually thank we you. allow them to say a few words, right? We allow them to say a few words. Okay. Oh, well, thank you for that welcome. I'm honored to be here, longtime resident, uh, user of Long Beach Transit. When I first got to Long Beach, I caught the bus to school and uh, looking forward to making a positive contribution for my community through this commission. Great. We're looking forward to working with you. Um, all right. So we're going to item three, uh, employees recognition. Now Jen Flores will present the April 2024 Employees of the Month. Good afternoon, Vice Chair Mejia, members of the board, and Mr. McDonald. I am Jen Flores, board secretary. In support of LBT's strategic priority of fostering employee engagement, it is my pleasure to acknowledge the Employees of the Month for April 2024. Bus operator Jose Roman has been with LBT for 18 years, and this is his third Employee of the Month nomination. He is a shining example of what it means to be a frontline employee. His outstanding work ethic and willingness to assist customers with a smile have made him a respected mentor among his peers. Jose's positive attitude and dedication to providing excellent customer service contribute significantly to LBT's mission. He continuously meets key performance indicators, further showcasing his commitment and effectiveness. For maintenance and infrastructure, we have lead mechanic Martin Esparza, who has been with LBT for 24 years, and this is his eighth Employee of the Month nomination. He was also Employee of the Year in 2013. Martin, as the primary lead at LBT2, is a valuable asset to the agency. He consistently goes above and beyond, particularly in training new mechanics and providing extensive knowledge and experience to ensure buses are repaired promptly and remain operational daily. His contributions extend to tackling complex troubleshooting tasks and effectively leading our team. For administrative staff, we have Jonathan Serrano Blanco, who is the payroll supervisor and has been with LBT for six years. This is his second Employee of the Month nomination. Most recently, Jonathan demonstrated exceptional dedication in, implicate, in implementing the latest labor contract, navigating double payroll weeks with a short staffed team, and overcoming techn technology challenges to ensure accurate payroll processing. His commitment extended to working long hours and weekends, prioritizing customer service, and upholding financial accountability. Jonathan's efforts significantly contributed to keeping LBT and its customers operational. We commend him for his hard work and the positive impact he has had on the organization. It is my pleasure to now present these valuable members of the Long Beach Transit team. My name is Martinez Parza. My title is actually a lead man, and I've been working for Long Beach Transit for the last 25 years. My favorite part is the friendship uh, that I feel among my coworkers is nice to work with them. I feel honored because I I have uh, been employed in the for quite a few times, so it feels good, and I've been honored to be employed of the month. My name is Jonathan Serrano Blanco. I'm the payroll supervisor here at Long Beach Transit, and I've been with the company for six years. 
My favorite part about working here at Long Beach Transit is the culture of Long Beach Transit and the team that I work with. A little bit shocking being Employee of the Month was definitely unexpected, but I wouldn't have had it if it wasn't for the good team that I have, and I appreciate being Employee of the Month at Long Beach Transit. Thank you to all the employees of the month for being dedicated to connecting communities, moving people, making everyday life better. We appreciate all essential workers, especially our own. Thank you. All right, we'll move forward to public comment at this time. I invite, I invite members of the public who want to address the board of any matter that does not appear on the agenda edit within the board's jurisdiction. If you have not already done so, I ask you to submit a speaker card to the board secretary. Comments are limited to three minutes. Agenda item table will provide an additional opportunity for members of the public who want to address the board on any matters that does not appear on the agenda and it's within the board's jurisdiction. The board is here to receive comments only and there will be no exchange of dialogue with the, with the commenters. There's no public comment at this time? There's no public comment. There was just one email comment, which has been provided to the board by Wayne Wright. No Zoom public comment either. Are we on item five? Yes, sure. Item okay. five. Apologize for being late today. Okay, now we have Kenneth McDonald with who will present the president and CEO report. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Sutton. I think I'm organized. Good afternoon, Chair Sutton, members of the board, and all who assembled here today. I am Kenneth McDonald, President and CEO at Long Beach Transit. My monthly agency report will highlight some of the accomplishments and ongoing activities centered around our strategic priorities. LBT's strategic priorities are improve safety and service quality, exercise financial accountability, foster employee engagement, enhance customer experience and promote community and industry focus. The LBT headquarters construction remodeling project, which includes this Rosa Parks chamber, has earned the LEEDS silver certification. LEEDS with his leadership in energy and environmental design is a certification of official recognition for a project that complies with the requirement prescribed within the rate and systems created and maintained by the U.S. Green Building Council, or USGBC. The categories evaluated by USGBC include the location and transportation services surrounding the construction project, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere control, material and resources used during the project, environmental indoor air quality, innovation in design, and optimizing energy performance. LBT will continue to evaluate LEED certification for other upcoming construction projects and look for further LEED certification here at LBT and in the future. In the, in the not too distant future, I would be bringing before the board the building and property enhancement project, which will have the same focus for LEED certification. As a member of the App 
American Public Transportation Association, or APTA, APTA, Legislative Committee, I, along with the Government Relations Manager, Marisol Baharis, and Capital Program Manager, Jennifer Maxwell, traveled to the APTA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C., which was held on April 7th to 9th, 2024. APTA's Legislative Conference is a forum where public transportation industry professionals from across the nation make their presence felt and heard in Washington, D.C. The conference helped educate APTA's members on important changes in federal legislations and policy initiatives and affords an unparalleled opportunity to shape the industry's positions and federal advocacy agenda. Marisol, Jennifer, and I met with five legislative offices. We met with Sen Sen Senator LaFonza Butler, Senator Alex Padilla, Congressman Robert Garcia, Congresswoman Nanette Barragan, and Congresswoman Lin Linda Sancier. The purpose of these annual meetings were to were to inform our federal legislative representatives and their staff about LBT systems and needs to cultivate support for the LBT zero emission fleet and zero emission program, and explain LBT as a resource for legislative support as it relates to transit for each legislature's district. We also follow up on LBT's FY 2025 appropriation project. The next APTA conference is the Transit Board Members Seminar scheduled to be held in July. As we have done in the past, once APTA has finalized the conference details, the board secretary will extend invitation to the board of directors for opportunities for up to three board members to attend the conference. The 2024 LBT Board of Director Retreat has been scheduled for May 28 and 29, and will be held here at the LBT Rosa Parks Board Chambers. The two-day retreat will focus on LBT's present status and future plans. The Board Secretary would be reaching out to board members to schedule a phone interview with the retreat consultants during the weeks of May 6 and 13 for input into the, the up coming agenda. Okay, pay attention to this um this flag bearing <laughs> member of our community. <laughs> anybody anybody can guess who that is. <laughs> there is a prize at the end, a prize at the end for the person who can guess who is the flag bearing. You're not gonna say who it is. Can you guess who the flag bearing uh community member is? In the agency's effort to promote community and industry focus and to foster employee engagement, staff has put and, and board members have participated in various community events this month. There's a list in front of you, the Hiring Garden 60th Anniversary Parade, the Colum Cambodia, yeah, Colombia, Cambodia, Cambodia Town Parade and Cultural Festival, the McBride Park Senior Center Cambodian New Year Celebration, McBride High School presentation, CSULB Green Generation Showcase, and the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. LBT participated in the Acura Grand Prix at Long Beach in the city of Long Beach's largest event. The community relations teams hosted a booth of the Lifestyle Ex at the Lifestyle Expo, where they hosted the popular Transit on the Track remote control bus races and answered inquiries about LBT services. Additionally, the team operated a booth at the LBT water taxi dock near the aquarium, assisting customers and, and visitors with questions about the special aqua and aqua bus service running that weekend. I want to thank all of the board members and the staff who volunteered to make LBT's participation in these community events successful. And that's our board. Uh, secretary <laughs> board member, I uh, would have to guess who it is now. You all have to come up with who is that person. 
who is who is that mask man <laughs> as i close my report this month will it would i as i close this month i want to give a reminder that next month's board meeting will include the fy 2025 budget presentation this end my ceo update for this month thank you thank you ken are there any comments from the public all right hearing none are there any comments from the board uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to thank for the uh, thank everyone for the invitation to participate in the parade, and also thank staff for giving up their time on a Sunday. Um, I know there's a lot, many other things that you could be doing on a Sunday. So thank you for participating in the Cambodian parade. It was a great time. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none. We'll move on to consent calendar. Um, all matters included on the consent calendar are considered routine by the Long Beach Transit Board of Directors and will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the Board of Directors or the public so requests, in which event the matter shall be removed from the consent calendar and considered as a separate item. Uh, do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, the consent calendar? So move. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, would you like to do the roll? Call for the vote? Yes. Chair Sutton? I'm abstaining because I was not here for the March meeting. Vice Chair Mejia? Aye. Secretary Treasurer Anjorbe? Director Angeles? Aye. Director Kemp? Aye. Director Rawlings? Aye. Director Thrash Untuk. Director Thrash Untuk has been excused. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to item seven, regular calendar, monthly financial report. Um, and is Lisa here? Yes, she is. Great. Take it away. Thank you, Chair Sutton, members of the board, Mr. McDonald. My name is Lisa Patton, and I'm the Executive Director and Vice President of Finance and Budget. I am before you today to present the monthly financial report for the period of July 1, 2023 through March 31st, 2024. If we take a look at the first page of our report, on the left side of the report, you'll see the monthly comparison and the right side gives you the year to date comparison. So at the top section of the report, the operating revenue, this is the revenue that LBT directly generates. And so if we look at passenger fares, we can see that it continues the positive trend that we've seen all year of being above last year and also above budget. Special event revenue during the month, there were three special events. Uh, there was Galaxy Express charter service and then charter service for the California Association of Museums and the Long Beach Department Health and Human Services also had a, a, a charter. Under interest and miscellaneous, you continue to see the higher interest rates um, are uh, reflecting favorably. And so our total operating revenue for the month's at 124% of budget and for the year it's at 120%. Under subsidy revenue, when we look at the subsidy revenue, we can see that the federal line is down and that just reflects a lag in the timing of the federal drawdowns. And we expect those to pick up over the next couple of months. So overall, all the other subsidies are in line and subsidy revenue is at 89% of budget, 89% year to date. Next, if we look at our operating, ex nope, we're gonna go to total revenue. Uh, total revenue is at 92% for the month and 92% year to date. Next, we'll go to operating expenses. And you can see it's broken out of the summary level by area. Operations for the months at 99% of budget, 100% year to date. Maintenance is at 117% of budget for the month, 102% year to date. Administration is at 106% for the month and 88% year to date. And then fuel and lubricants is at 92% for the month, 87% year to date. So over, op, overall operating expenses are at 104% of budget for the month, 97% year to date. And we'll go to the next page to give you the details on that. And first you'll see labor and as people in, in the people business, that's our largest area of investment. And so you'll see some increases reflected here that reflect the increases um, during March 
due to the implementation of the union contract increases. So you'll see some areas are above the budget for the month, and then we'll look at year to date. So for operators for the month, uh, they're at 100%, 102% year to date. Maintenance um, and, well, mechanics are at 118% for the month, 107% year to date. Staff are at 117% a month and 91% year to date. Next, if we look at fringe benefits, you'll see highlighted here the uniform and tool allowance. And that reflects, you can see in the month of March, the increase in uniform and tool allowance, which was part of the union contract. Under services, under advertising, reflected here is the free service on election day. If we go to the next page of our report for material and supplies. Under fleet parts and supplies, this area consists to be a, a persistent challenge for the agency. And you can see we're at 120% of budget for the month and 114% year. The next is casualty and liability. And overall, we know that the insurance renewals are running higher than budget this year. Under miscellaneous expenses, under other, uh, that reflects the increase in the ground lease with, with the airport. So overall expenses for the month are at 140, 104% uh, for the month. Uh, overall, we're at 97% of that. Next, we'll go to the balance sheet, the assets, and we can see an increase in cash and investments. And if we drop down to the receivables, if you look at the state receivable, you can see it went from 5.3 million to 2.2 million. And that reflected the payment of outstanding TDA invoices. If we go to the next page to liabilities, we can see an increase in um, trade payables. And that reflects outstanding invoices due for Long Beach PD services, dial lift services, and the security contractor invoices. I want to give a shout out to Michael Herman. This is his first report that he's created for us. So uh, thank you. That completes my report. Well done. Are there any comments from the public? All right, hearing none, are there any comments from the board? Chair, I have a question for Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. On page two, um, schedule of expenses under services, year to date is 130. Can you explain what that is under other? Uh, yes, I can. So that reflects the building lease commissions. And so with, uh, with additional leases uh, comes a building commission. And so that is reflected under other. And other is one of those categories where if it's not captured anywhere else, it's, it's other. Any other questions from the board? All right, hearing none, thank you, Lisa, for that great report. We'll move on to item eight, is it? Yes, it is. All right. Now, Catherine Benneke will present agenda item eight. Good afternoon, Chair Sutton, members of the board, Mr. McDonald, and all others assembled here today. I am Catherine Benneke, Environmental Health and Safety Manager for Long Beach Transit. I am before you today to request the board adopt the 2024 Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan, known, known as the PTASP, with the newly set safety targets as required by the Federal Transit Administration, commonly known as the FTA, under the Urbanized Area Formula Grants. The FTA requires agencies that are recipients of federal funding through the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act to review and provide updates to safety targets and recertify the existing PTASP. As a transit agency receiving FTA funding, Long Beach Transit, referred to as LBT, is required to review the PTASP plan and update safety targets yearly in accordance with 49 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 673. As an operator of public transportation that receives funding under FTA's Urbanized Area Formula Grants, LBT is required to maintain an agency safety plan that includes the processes and procedures to impl implement the safety management system as authorized by the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, established in 49 U.S. Code 5329. 
The safety committee members who meet quarterly and are comprised of equal union and management representatives approve the proposed plan that is before the board today. LBT must review and update safety targets to the PTASP by July 31st, 2024. The PTASP must be signed by the CEO and approved by the LBT's board of directors prior to submitting it to the FTA. The PTASP must be made available upon request by the FTA, other federal entities, or state safety oversight institutions. Enforcement of the PTASP is regulated by the Department of Transportation, referred to as DOT. The board most recently approved the adoption of the 2023 LBT PTASP last year to comply with the final rule set by the FTA. The PTASP is a living document that will evolve through successive updates and be expanded as needed through recorded revisions. The slide before you highlights the revisions made to the LBT's 2024 PTASP. In 2023, National Transit Database, referred to as NTD, reportable numbers were added to calculate the 2024 safety performance targets, referred to as the SPTs in the plan. SPTs were updated from a five-year rolling average to a three-year rolling average. Security data was added to the SBT to collect data for assaults on transit workers. Revisions to the Safety Committee's objectives to include governing rules and new requirements from the 49 CFR 673 2024 amendments. Terminology changed operators to transit workers where applicable to align with 49 CFR 673-2024 amendments. Updated safety contact information was also required. Safety performance measures are used to develop specific performance targets to ensure the PTASP objectives and goals are being met and safety outcomes are continually improved. The safety performance targets are found on pages 12 through 15 in the PTASP report provided in your packets and will be further explained in the next few slides. These elements are directly aligned with LBT's strategic priority, improved safety and service quality. The SPT consists of 12 categories. The original eight include one, total number of fatalities, two, fatality rate per 100,000 vehicle revenue miles, three, total number of injuries, and then thus four, injury rate per 100,000 vehicle revenue miles, five, total number of safety events, six, safety events per 100,000 vehicle revenue miles, seven, system reliability, and eight, the annual vehicle revenue miles. NTD added four reporting categories this year to focus on transit worker assaults occurring on transit systems. As can be viewed on the slide before you, you are the, the PTASP definitions for the new reporting categories for minor and major security events. A major security event is defined as an incident that results in fatalities within 30 days, serious injuries requiring immediate off-scene medical care or meeting severity criteria or significant other safety events, excluding natural illnesses or minor injuries unless induced by the event. A minor security event is defined as an incident that leads to minor injuries or illnesses not requiring immediate off-scene medical attention or does not meet the thresholds of fatalities, non-severe injuries, or significant outcomes defined for a major security event. So the four SBTs added for 2024 and continuing the numbers are nine, total number of major security events, 10, major security events per the 100,000 vehicle revenue miles, 11, total number of minor security events, and 12, minor security events per 100,000 vehicle revenue miles. LBT reports on two modes of transit, fixed route bus and paratransit. This slide shows the SBTs for fixed route bus. System reliability is classified as the mean distance between major mechanical failures by mode. The NTD defines a major mechanical system failure as a failure of some mechanical element of the revenue vehicle that prevents the vehicle from completing a scheduled revenue trip or starting the next scheduled revenue trip 
because vehicle movement is limited or have a safety concern. These figures are calculated using a formula that takes the total number of events multiplied by 100,000 and then divides that by LBT's annual vehicle revenue miles. So an example, you can see the injury rate in 2023 is equivalent to one on the table. So it's the one occurrence times 100,000 vehicle revenue miles divided by the annual vehicle revenue miles, which is 6,359,244, which gives us the incident rate of 0 0.02. The slides shown here are for our power transit. Injuries are classified as any injury which requires immediate medical attention away from the scene, excluding single injury NTD reporting threshold. For example, single injury slips, trips, or falls, walking to or from the transit vehicle and is injured, or a securement issue. Safety event, accident, incident, or occurrence meets any NTD reporting threshold and one, occurs at a transit revenue facility, maintenance facility, or rail yard. Two, occurs on a transit right away or infrastructure, being the underlying framework or structures that support a public transportation system. Three, occurs during a transit related maintenance activity, or four, involves a transit revenue vehicle. The rates are calculated as previously explained, the only difference being the VMR multiplier is a 10,000 rather than 100,000. As an example, the injury rate in 2022 was six occurrences times 10,000 vehicle revenue miles divided by 122,954 annual vehicle revenue miles, which gives us an incident rate of 0.49. Safety performance targets for security, as I mentioned earlier, is a new target added to the safety performance targets. Starting in 2023, the FDA requires public transportation companies to report security events in the NTD. The 2024 LBT PTASP has been revised to meet this requirement. Due to the tracking of security events in NTD starting in 2023, only one year of data is available. The numbers used for the calculation are obtained from LBT's NTD annual report being the SNS 20, which is certified by our CEO. So at this time, staff is recommending that the Board of Directors adopt the 2024 Long Beach Transit Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan to comply with the FTA final rule in accordance with Federal Regulations 49 CFR Part 673. So I thank you for your time. This concludes the presentation. I will now answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you. Um, we'd like to... Um... Uh, call for a motion first. Uh, do I hear a motion? I'll move. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Great. Second. Okay. Um, we're going to hear from the board first and then go to the public. Public comment first. Say again? Public comment first. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Just checking. All right. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? Hearing none. Um, anybody from the board that would like to ask a question? Chair sure, Senator. Um, obviously, today is a little bit fitting with respect to your presentation, and knowing the LA County <clears throat> Metro's meeting was pretty much um, all the topic in terms of the high profile incidents that occurred for LA Metro. And, all hands were on board to having these conversations. Uh, and it sounds as if we're doing a good job as an agency that we don't necessarily have the same comparison to incidences on transit assault on our employees. Or am I, am I wrong in that? Or can, could you clarify that? Is it, what, what are the percentages of, of assaults on uh, transit workers as it relates to ours? Well, why don't I answer that? Because oh, yeah. I stay in the middle of it. Um, we we have a very uh, I, I'm trying to remember we had an incident a 
of an attack in the last six months. I can't think of one of the top of my head. I look at the report, I don't see any there. We've been very fortunate so far that some of the things, some of the societal things that are affecting transit across the country have been very low in long range. We hope to keep it that way. We've been very fortunate. Um, we, we get some issues about, you know, uh, what, what is called like minor issues, somebody throwing water on an operator, but we haven't had a major assault yet. And so how we keep it like this is something I would like to do, but we have seen very low uh, incidents in Long Beach. That's, that's great to hear. Th then my follow-up question is, uh, in this report itself, what does FTA do with it? I mean, is it we just file it, and then is there some sort of trigger point that if we don't do a certain thing that they take money away, or? Yeah. So number one, we have to file this to get our money. So if you notice that there, this came out, uh, this PTAS was um, adjusted about a couple of years ago, and they formed this committee of union and, and management to um, have this these quarterly meetings. And the quarterly meetings has to be signed off by me, brought to the board, the board uh, adopt this, and then I su supply it to FTA. Exactly where they're going with it, that's a big concern of mine also. How do we follow up with this? There are a lot of things I think we can do to um, try to make sure that we don't, we don't have the problems that we, we're experiencing right now that it would involve FTA. That I, when we were in DC last week, I think I stood up a hornet's nest by bringing that up that we need to have police uh, safety. We need to uh, have health workers, FTA, transit agencies, all getting together to look at how we look at this that is changing in our society today. There was a time when we didn't see these kind of problems on transit, and now they're very uh, prevalent on transit. So not just saying that we measure the numbers, but what, what do we do with the numbers when we get them? So there's not, there's a, there are a lot of things that are placed upon us that we have to do. There's a second one now that is now in California itself. They, they took the top 10 transit agencies and we have to report on incidents, not on the bus, but close to our bus stops. And of the 10 in the, in the, we were surprised that Long Beach Transit is number 10, of the top 10 transit agencies in uh, California that has to report on the on these incidents, not just, like I say, not just reporting on incidents that happen on the vehicle, but incidents that happen in the vicinity of bus stops. So that we can now look at what steps do we take next to try to address those so they're constant, um, constantly upgrading these requirements with a lot of reporting that are required by the transit agencies. And where we go with this is, I think the intent is that we would find a way to try to reduce these incidences on transit systems. It's a long way of going about it, but there are a lot of things happening when it comes to safety and security and the requirements of the transit agency happening. Well, I want to obviously congratulate you on the six months and in terms of this and this, uh, the fear that I have, I, I think, is in many respects, there's a lot of these things that are not within our control. And so then, therefore, at the end of the day, here you are being penalized by a TA on some, you know, grant monies or what have you, relative to some incidents that you're not a law enforcement agency, right. you know, you, yes. you know, mental health and you know, yes. all these other problems that we have that are societal are not necessarily within our control. And so yet, tying in our responsibility to dollars and cents as it relates to that, I think is something we should be concerned about. And we are. I think that one of the things I would like to see us do, we, we had a um, FDA administrator called Simpson, who, um, I forget his first name, but he, back a couple of 10 or 15 years, whenever he was the FDA administrator, he called that we have these meetings together across the country that you get with police and, and uh, mental health and and that disappeared. I think we need to bring it back. That was my point when we were in DC last week. At, we need to bring those back that we start talking about with the agencies that are responsible for these with transit agencies and not that we just have to keep reporting on it. Um, and we are being held accountable for a lot of things that are, you, you said it, uh, Director, that, that are in the society. But it spills over into transit, and transit are expected to solve them, I think, and we can't solve them alone. 
and that is constantly being um, brought up that as FDA and APTA, what do we do together to solve these problems or address, not only we can solve them, but address these problems. Very important thing that you're asking that is happening right now in the transit agent. And a lot of it is uh, unfunded mandates. They're not, these mandates are not funded. They're not, they don't come with dollars. They just come with additional requirements on the transit. I can go on for another week, but I'll stop. Any other comments or questions? Chair uh, Sutton, if I may. Um, thank you, Catherine. First of all, um, the slides that you presented do not match the packet. Um, some of the footnotes are off and some of the uh, pagination is off. So I, if we can look into that for other meetings, that would be great. I find it very frustrating to follow you and where I've made my notes, I don't, the numbers don't match. So um, I have a question regarding table five, fixed route bus, where you list the uh, number of fatalities, fatality rate, Minus 10, page 10 of 26. So you have columns of 2021, 2022, and 2023. And my question is in regards to row total number of safety events. In 2021, we have two documented. 2022, we have six documented. And 2023, we have 15. Do you have any information or can you elaborate on the increase, why it's gone up, and then why did it significantly go up between 2022 and 2023? I, I, can, I can tell you the information that is submitted on the packet that you have yeah. is not accurate because that came before that we solidified the numbers coming off of the SNS 40 for majors that's required on the SPT reporting data. Okay. So there was some confusion. So some of those were minor incidents that were reported on your packet that were thus further defined. So they come under an SNF 50 category that was reported to the NTD. That actually has no place in the PTAS, but this time because they're only looking for majors. So that's why that's down to four on the slides that I presented to you today. Okay. So that is actually, we don't have a huge increase. We, we're, we're kind of staying even. Okay. We're doing good. Um, but you're, you're asking us to vote on what we were provided. We're and so it's, it, I can't. I can't sit here and look at your slides and my slides and know what what I'm going to vote on. Yeah, because um, we're going to have to get this so correct. Go ahead. I will look into this and why that is. I thought I went through this and I saw that. Um, and yeah, I, I would look in to see why that is. Okay. And um, so that's why we're here this early. So I'll bring it back to the okay. board when I if, get it cleaned up. Okay. If I could, I think the issue, Raul, may have been on Friday when you received the packet. Mm -hmm. The Monday, the, the following Monday, um, uh, EHS uh, did submit a new report. So the one that, that Ken has was the one that went into the public packet. Okay. So that might be where the discrepancy came from. Okay. Um, it should have been Martin. Well, I don't know if you ever went back in, but when I revised it, when I I, uh, I did upload the new one to the board and marked it as revised. But if you didn't go back in too diligent, then you would not have seen that the report got revised. Um, perhaps a notice to let us know that something's been updated since Friday, five o'clock. Yes. That might be helpful. Okay. Then I have the opportunity to reprint or look at it again. Okay. Um, Catherine also since this is going to come back so like i said some of the footnotes are off um yeah you have not you whoever prepared this under table five paratransit under system reliability you have 56 that's the footnote 56 
and then the number of injuries here it's three but you had one and then number of safety events i have four and you had two so so i would look into okay. why you have a different report than i have so i will i will i will solve that problem and get back all right so we're not going to vote on it right. today because if we have two reports i do not want two reports out there is the one I would be signing is the one that is in front of me, not the one you're on. Okay. So okay. You know, I right. will look at this and we'll revisit this document and bring it back to the so, board. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. All right. If I may, I believe we do have to make a motion to amend that right correct? To table it. The vote. Oh. Okay. Pull it off and bring it back. Are there any co other comments from the board or questions? Yep. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Vice President Brown. Uh, based on what I saw on that screen, uh, I, for security events, it looks like we're up 359,000 roughly. I don't know which slide it was, but the title was security events. 300. Let's see, I don't know that I have the slide handy. Director Kemp, I don't think the slide that they presented is in our packet. Can you can you just flip through them, please, Vice President Brown or somebody? There we go. Okay, I'm looking at the third column under 2023. The previous year is 6,090,000. Is this vehicle miles? Oh, annual vehicle. Got it. I got it. Question? Question answered. Hey. Got it. So your question had to do with the annual miles. Yep. I understand yeah. now. Vehicle, that's vehicle revenue miles? Yes. Got it. Thank you. The annual vehicle revenue. I can see the 22 to 23 we went from 6 million to 6.35 million. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you for your report. Um, we'll be seeing you next next month, I'm sure. And uh, I'm glad, I, I wanted to commend staff for bringing this to us early because it gives us a chance to get it right. So, um, I appreciate that. Some oftentimes, you know, boards get items like right on top of the deadlines. And uh, so we'd have to work that out right now, but we don't. So looking forward to revisiting this next month. Thank you. Okay, item nine. Uh, now Joanna Vold will present agenda item nine. Good afternoon, Chair Sutton, members of the board, Mr. McDonald, and to all who are assembled here today. My name is Joanna Bould, and I'm the manager of procurement. I'm before you today to request the board to authorize an update to Long Beach Transit's procurement policy to delegate to the president and CEO the authority to approve all annual and multi-year renewals of software and hardware license and maintenance agreements. All new hardware or software agreements costing in excess of $250,000 will continue to be brought to the Board of Directors for approval. This change would only apply to renewals of existing contracts or services that are less than $250,000 per year, but may eventually exceed $250,000 in total as the services are renewed each year. By way of background, LBT uses numerous software and hardware applications that support day-to-day -day business activities. Many of these applications are essential to LBT's operations and require 24-7 uptime. For example, applications such as Hastis, Transit Master, and Ellipse are critical tools used for scheduling, resource allocation, and monitoring, ultimately underpinning LBT's ability to deliver consistent and reliable service. The IT agreements under which these services operate are unique for several reasons. They often involve the development or resale of proprietary software, that once implemented cannot be easily switched for another system without causing disruption to LBT's business activities or mandatory reporting. 
These applications also require licensing, maintenance, and upgrade services that are renewed on an annual or semi-annual basis. Additionally, over time, the applications are continuously upgraded, meaning the services offered may change over the life of the contract. LBT's usage of these systems also may evolve in a way that impacts pricing, such as the addition or deletion of subscription licenses. Due to the dynamic nature of these agreements, a unique contract structure that allows for the annual renewal of licensing, maintenance, and other related fees is in LBT's best organizational interest. Additionally, certain applications extend discounted rates for multi-year renewals. The flexibility to negotiate a multi-year renewal for certain applications would afford LBT the opportunity to negotiate extended terms for stable use applications. The prompt renewal of expiring licenses and support agreements is required for maintaining continuity. LBT procurement works closely with the IT department to track all expiration dates and ensure renewals are completed on time. The recommended policy change will allow for the continued renewal of these service and hardware license and maintenance agreements, even if the total cost of all annual renewals exceeds the president and CEO's current approval threshold of $250,000. This practice is in alignment with industry standards. If approved, this will improve the transparency, effectiveness, and efficiency of LBT's renewal processes. Staff is requesting the board to authorize an update to Long Beach Transit's procurement policy, delegate to the president and CEO the authority to approve all annual and multi-year renewals of software and hardware licenses and maintenance agreements. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do I hear a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All right. Any uh, comments from the public? All right. Hearing none, we'll bring it back inside. Uh, any comments from uh, the board? Any questions? Go ahead. Hi, Joanna. Right. Thank you for this information. Just a quick clarifying question for the table that's presented. I assume that these are agreements over $50,000, but under the $250,000. Or are they all of the recurring agreements that have to do with hardware and software? Higher side of the pricing would look like. Perfect. That answers my question. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any other questions from the board? All right. Hearing none. Um, do we, can we vote on the pad now? All right, that's very cool. So all those in favor say aye, or not say aye, but indicate so on the pad. If you, um, you can indicate no or abstain. That's passed. All right, thank you. Okay, now we're uh, at public comment. At this time, I'd like to invite anybody from the public to uh, come on up and say a few words if you'd like. Anyone? Okay. Hearing none, I'd like to open it up to the board on item 11. Are there any requests from the board? Chair, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Um, is it possible to get an agency organizational chart? <laughs> The answer is yes, and you will have one next month in the board when I okay. do the presentation. There is an org chart that would be in the right. but you right. will get one in that, or if you want. So it will be available next month. Great. Um, thank you. And a second um, comment request, um, and perhaps it's going to be presented next month. But um, is it possible to get presentations um, by department heads or each VP of their operations um, and their staff? I recently chatted with uh, one of the managers and found out that they have 30 to 40 staff members that report to them. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that a manager has 30 to 40 people reporting to them. So I'm just curious to know how these uh, departments, how they're set up, structured, and how many, how much staff they have. Um, it doesn't have to be in a board meeting. Um, it does, they don't have to be all in one board meeting. They can be spaced out over time. They can be on a piece of paper, a presentation, or it could be verbal. Let me make sure I'm clear what you're asking, is that we have a, an overview of each department presented or sent to the board. You want it 
a presentation or just we can send it? I don't want to overburden staff, just uh, kind of a snapshot. Okay. We can do that. So whatever you think so, is best. So we, uh, I know that's one of my agenda items at the board of retreat that I was going to go through the organization because we have a lot of new board members here. And so one of the things that Jen and I are working on for the board retreat is an overview of all the departments and the organization in terms of the service area. So because that has been presented before, but as we have the chair is the longest serving board member, but we haven't done that in a while. So the intent of the retreat was to open the retreat with a status of, of Long Beach Transit. So if you would like it there, we can do that. And then when after that discussion, if we need to have further explanation, we can we can do that. So the two answers, one would be in next month's budget and the other would be at the retreat is what we're planning right now. Okay. Any other suggestions or comments from the board? All right, I have a couple. Um, today at Metro, there was an approval of the Go Pass program uh, and uh, motion. So I'd like to hear a report on that um, next month, if possible, what it, how it impacts Long Beach and what our plans are. Um, and then also, um, Ken, I know you give us a little bit of a government report, but uh, periodically, it, I think it would be good for us to hear um, what we're doing with um, the state and the feds, and then what impacts are their programs and and uh, policies having on us? Uh, so, I know you can address you can address that either in your report or or you know maybe one of your staff people can can come to the podium and tell us about that. And then I'd also like to know periodically. What's going on with grant programs and what are we going after state, uh, local, and uh, federal grants and what targets we're trying to get money for, uh, whether they're for pilots or, you know, pilot programs or, or whether they're to sustain uh, services. Okay. Um, the second item that you spoke of was just government reports, just kind of keeping, keeping I know you're, you're, you kept us surprised of what was going on in Washington, but uh, from a state, local, and, and uh, uh, federal level, uh, when it's appropriate, uh, what's going on so that, so that we're aware of any bills or things like that that might have an impact on Long Beach Transit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll put, um, since this is a, a new request, we'll put together what, there are a number of bills that affect us, especially at the state, We've gone through, just went through that a couple of years ago. We can bring those to the board and the state, uh, the federal ones that comes out too. We talked about the PTAS. Um, not a lot local in terms of bill, but we can look at the state and federal. What is What are the bills that are out there that affect trends? Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly interested in what, you know, what is approved by Metro and how that might impact us as well. Okay. In terms of local. Any other comments from the board? All right, hearing none. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Thank you. So the next regular meeting will be held on May 23rd, and I invite the public to attend. Um, also, would like to uh, make sure that in our announcements uh, to the public uh, with our agenda that that we also include information on how to get here by bus. Uh, I think that would be helpful because we are in a new location now and it may be a little bit more difficult for the public to get to than uh, Anaheim or downtown Long Beach. So thank you very much for attending today and we'll see you next month. We do have to do the vote to adjourn. Oh, I do have to take a vote. Oh yeah, let's do that. Okay, so if you approve ending the meeting, say yes uh, for those that are opposed? Say no or abstain. <laughs>